Hi again everyone, Ken from Woodling Woods back again with another little tutorial here. This is basically going to be a, um, a, a carving that you can do. You can take it in various uh, different directions as you can see the way I did. Uh, we're going to actually do this little character here. He's for the most part the easiest. They're all fairly easy to do. But uh, it's all from the standard um, block of wood. This is one, eighth, uh, one and one eighth inches. Um, square piece and it's about four inches tall and you can see the other measurements this measurement right here is for the hat and you can see it's pretty much taken across on all three figures uh, I come down about uh, from that one and one eighth inch mark another seven sixteenths it's approximately the bottom of the nose and you know it can vary a little bit one eighth is going to be probably about the bottom of the mustache and then um, three inches from the top we're going to have kind of the base of uh, where the arms would be and, and again this is an example we're going to do one little whittle here but i just wanted to show you that you can take it in various directions you got a little wizard a little santa figure and a kind of a hillbilly um, and you can see they're they're fairly easy to do um, you can add as much detail or keep it fairly simple as you want um, so it's a it's a nice little project that's not too complicated there's no mouth and bob no feet um, hands are all kind of either tucked in or, or under the sleeves and um, it's a fun little project that um, with with um, pretty much the same measurements across the board you can you can take it in different directions and I'm sure you can come up with other ideas anyway uh, I'm gonna get my knife ready and get the block of wood together and we'll start whittling uh, the little wizard figure here. be right back Okay, here's a block of wood. We're going to uh, do this whittle with um, this little um, Rough Rider pocket knife. It's a good little knife. I actually um, worked on a larger blade today, and I got it uh, kind of ready to go. So um, we're going to we're going to give this knife a try on, on this little figure. However, uh, with that in mind, you could certainly use the the Stanley if you've got one of those. Um, and you know, if anybody's interested in seeing me do these figures. Uh, uh, you know other versions of these figures with other knives let me know you could also use like a, a Denny knife uh, standard whittling knife or you know the good old North Bay Forge knife um, our winner by the way received his knife and and I hope he's in hope he's enjoying it so anyway uh, let me get things set up and I'll be right back Okay, here we are. First, we're going to take down the uh, top where the hat's going to be. So we're going to just kind of take away some wood here. And again, this is the little the little wizard figure, if you remember from the beginning. So um, we'll do him with his little wizard-like hat. So take your time. Let's go through. This is, uh, you know, kind of a nice, relaxing part of the whittle. Uh, just taking down the end here. What I tend to do in these little fizz, uh, little wizard uh, characters is put the hat kind of, um, if you saw from the beginning there, kind of leaning over to one side of it. And just, uh, again, when you're doing these little whittles, add your own little detail to it, whatever you, whatever you like, and it'll make it more personal and, uh, you know, gives the figure a little interest. So anyway, let me uh, speed through this part because it's really basic stuff. Be right back. And I'll jump in right here. You can see I just, um, this is going to be, this would be the top of the hat, but it's going to be, you know, kind of bending over a little bit um, to the wizards. I guess that would be the wizards um, uh, left side over there. So anyway, that's all. I just kind of notched it out a bit and then we'll take it back here and bring it up a little bit on the sides. And then we'll keep going here. So I'll be right back. Okay, there we are. We got the, the hat essentially roughed out. Now we'll kind of go around the, um, the bottom of the hat here. Just follow your, your lines. And I tend to, if you can see here, um, slope the hat towards the back of the body. This would be the back of the body. This is the front. So kind of slope the hat a little bit. 
uh, I drew my lines, you can see it at a slight angle. Yeah, I think it just um, you know, looks more natural that way than sitting uh, straight on top. In, in, in some applications that may, that may work, but uh, in this case, I think angling, angling it back just a tad is, uh, is a good idea. But, choose your own style. If you, uh, if you like. Anyway, uh, this is just, I'm going to kind of speak through this section as well because all we're doing is uh, stop cuts and, and uh, defining the bottom of the hat here. I'll be right back. Okay, so there we did. Just kind of defined the bottom of the hat. I wouldn't uh, spend a lot of time getting the bottom of the hat perfect at this point because you're you're going to be you know doing some other cuts and you don't want to when you're when you're using it as at it sort of as a stop point for your knife when you're cutting up like this you're going to potentially you know chip and damage your side so don't worry about it just get just get it uh, defined out like that and uh, you should be you should be good. All right, so the bottom of the nose is uh, again at that, um, we came down um, one and an eighth inch for the hat and we came down another uh, seven sixteenths of an inch uh, for the nose. But again, these measurements, I put them in there because I know some people like them and it helps them and that's great, uh, but choose a, a longer nose, a shorter nose if, if you want. It's these measurements are just, they're, they're not critical by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, nothing in whittling is critical other than keeping your knife sharp. So the standard stuff here, we're just cutting back uh, for the bottom of the nose here. And I have, you know, lots of videos that kind of step you through that process. So um, if you need a little bit more detail, um, you know, go, go check them out. But you can see this is pretty 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 standard stuff. You know, we cut the nose back a little bit, we're angling it up top here a little bit. And that's all. Okay. So there you go. We're gonna start trimming this down. This here is all gonna be where his his uh, beard is. So we'll just kind of trim it down a little bit. Beard and mustache, I should say. And these marks here are going to be for the bottom of his, uh, where his um, robe, uh, for his uh, for his arms. We're not going to sh really show his arms. His arms are going to be hidden under, hidden under the bottom of his, uh, the robe here, the, the, you know, the arm portion of his robe. Besides, he's a wizard, right? So they're probably hiding some kind of magic stuff in their hands. So you can't really see it. They sneak up on you. So you see how we got that there? And then in the back, kind of the same thing. We're just going to take it down a bit. Again, his hair is going to come down to somewhere in here. You, you choose the length you want. It'll probably come down to about there or so. He's a wizard, so he's got you know fairly long hair, so we'll kind of trim that down. And um, it's about that. And then for the bottom of his uh, robe, we're going to create just a bit at the bottom here, just a bit of a, a fold line along the bottom here. Uh, so we we're, we're not going to trim that back too much because we're going to leave a little wood there for the for the fold line. And again, this is just going to be where the hair is going to kind of come. So I'm just marking that out. Okay, so there you go. This is just kind of roughing out the figure. So don't you know, don't get in the habit of working detail into your figure too too early on. Things may change. You might make modifications, and then you got to go back and rework it. So. Um, Keep the detail early on to to you know to 
to kind of a minimum. All right, so I said right about here, we'll uh, make his beard. I think it's gonna come down maybe a little further. So. And again, when you're making this type of cut, as you see, I'm kind of going in the direction. My hand's over here, obviously, so the knife is heading in that direction. This is the kind of uh, cut where you, you, know, you want to be careful. I use my thumb over here to secure the, uh, the movement of the knife. Um, so uh, you know, it's always preferable to cut away from you, but in some, in some situations, um, you have to kind of make a, 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 some cuts in the direction of your hand, so be cognizant of where that knife is and, and secure it as, as much as possible. Um, well, you know, I don't, as you can see, I know a lot of people, um, some people have even commented in the past about wearing protective gloves. And, um, you know, I, I don't wear them, as you obviously, as you can see. And uh, when I started whittling, I actually, I, I did wear them many years ago. Um, I wore, I wore gloves, and I don't think wearing gloves is a, is a, you know, sign of beginner. Like, oh, if he's he's an advanced whittler, he doesn't have to wear gloves. Yeah, that's nonsense. Wear gloves uh, if you're starting out, especially wear gloves. Uh, it makes you feel more comfortable. Get them. There's plenty of, um, plenty of. Uh, um, Glove whittling type glo gloves that are for you know for cuts. Uh, they have um, Kevlar in them, so it'll it'll it won't protect you from a stabbing cut, but it'll protect you from a slicing cut. And um, that, but as you as you whittle more, you'll you'll be more cognizant of where your knife is, and and um, and um, or you'll just be have thick skin, I guess, and get used to cuts. And honestly. <laughs> Believe it or not, most of the times when I've cut myself, it's not during whittling. It's either during just being lazy when I'm putting my knives away or sharpening or something like that. So, um, but it, it, it'll happen. If you whittle, you'll, you'll cut yourself eventually and hopefully it's fairly minor. But uh, get yourself a, a pair of protective gloves. And if you're starting out, uh, you should feel comfortable doing this. You shouldn't be afraid to do it. And that's, that's not gonna help you. And the other key thing, it seems counterintuitive to say this, but uh, those who whittle and wood carve a lot, if your knives are sharp, you have less chance of injuring yourself. You're not forcing it through the wood. Um, it's it's gl gliding through a lot easier, and you have more control over it. So keep your knives uh, honed up and sharp. Spend the time. You know, I spend, uh, before I start whittling, I hone my knives up. Uh, I spent uh, probably an hour and a half this morning uh, honing knives and getting them, getting them ready. Um, but I periodically stop as I'm doing my whittling and uh, also hone my knife up. Anyway, let me draw some guidelines in here for everybody and uh, and I'll be right back with that. Okay, as you can see, I'll give you an opportunity to check this out if you're following along and you want to draw your lines in. We have the mustache, the beard, hair lines along the side of the face, uh, the nose, the sides. Um, we have the where the arms are going to be, you can see over here and in the back as well. And then we have the hairline in the back. And same things on the arm on this side. And like I said, we're gonna have a little kind of bagginess fold in the in the bottom of this cape over here. So there you go, if you wanna mark those down. And I switched over. Uh, this is a modified, um, as most of my knives are, this is a modified Rough Rider. Um, I shaved, I, I, I took down the, the length of this uh, blade a little bit. Just makes it easier uh, when you're doing uh, cuts like we're gonna be doing here. Um, to have a slightly shorter blade. Although, you can certainly do it with a longer blade. But anyway, let's get moving here. So, first we'll kind of get the nose ready. I cut along the side, and then I just go in there and I take out a chunk of wood. Same on the other side. So come in there with your knife. Put a stop cut up at the top. And we're going to go here and just take out that chunk of wood. And that's 
basically forming the sides of the nose and the bottom portions. We're not going to really have eyes in here, uh, full eyes. We're just going to do a very simple um, line to represent the eye. Again, these are uh, geared towards um, beginners, but uh, actually I think they're kind of cool for, any, for anybody, even if you're, you know, you do a lot of whittling. They're fun, easy projects. You can you can whittle these out. Um, if you're not <laughs> doing a video, you can whittle these out pretty quickly, probably, you know, 20 minutes or, or so. And um, and then just leave them around for people, you know. It's kind of a fun little, fun little thing. If you like to hike, leave them out on the trail. Somebody finds one and they're like, hey, look at this. Um, anyway, let's do the sides of the hair over here. So we're going to come come around here and follow our line and kind of cut into what we did. So, and then you can kind of come back and start taking some of the wood up to that line away. So you can kind of see we, we just went around and defined the base of the hair. All right. And we'll do the same thing on this side. So we'll follow along our line here. Just like so. And then again, just Take the wood away up to that line. So pretty straightforward. Again, don't worry about getting it perfect at this point because we'll come back and and um, once we're once when we're doing our finish work, we'll come back and kind of refine it a little bit more. Um, so there you go. Um, I'm going to put cuts for the mustache over here, but I'm actually going to first stick a cheek line. Uh, I didn't draw those in, but this is kind of a smile line. We'll kind of come down from the nose a little bit and just tie that in. Over there and up a little bit. So let's break that out. Something like that. And then same thing over here. So there we go. And as far as the mustache goes, we'll just kind of continue that line down in here and also down in here. And then um, we're going to define the bottom of the mustache. So we're going to put a stop cut there and a stop cut there. This creates this little triangle thing we're going to just nip out. Something like that. And then We'll follow the base of the mustache around. Then we can just cut up to that. Okay, same thing on the other side. Alrighty, so 
So we've kind of defined the mustache for the most part. All right. So for the uh, cheek over here, I'm going to put a little notch in there and then cut a piece of wood away. And I'm going to take all this extra wood out over here as well. And you'll see what I'm done here, what I'm talking about. Okay, so... Kind of the bottom of the cheek is over there. And if you can see that. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Let me mark where that is. It should be right about... I always find that sticking a pencil line in there every so often is good because if you're holding the piece like this in front of you, you might not get the symmetry, symmetry correct. And a lot of times I, I still get it wrong. So um, that's all right though. Faces are perfectly symmetrical. So you can get away with a little asymmetry. Sounds like I'm making excuses, but it's true. All right. All right. Let's uh, continue the beard line. We'll come down here with that in here and then on the other side as well. And you can come back and remove some of the wood like so. Same thing over here. All right, we're moving along here. I'm going to define the sleeves. There's one cut there, and there's one cut over here, and then same kind of thing. We'll put a little stop cut, and we'll just take some wood away. So it kind of defines the uh, the bottom of the sleeve there of his robe, if you can see that. And the same thing on the front here. Put a little notch up in there under his beard, and then kind of take the wood away. So there you go. It's very simple. Not complicated. The arms are straight. They're not angled. Again, these are you know, like I said, simple, easy. Kind of relaxing carvings to do. All right, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll put a little notch in here for the sleeve, a little stop cut under his robe, and then just go back in and take that wood out. Simple. Same thing in the back. Stop cut or line on the robe and then stop cut up the top and then take the wood away. All right, so there we go. We got the basic, uh, the figure sort of uh, roughed out here pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, like I said, you could do these real fast. I'm taking my time and, and uh, talking through it. So it takes, you know, a little longer, but you can, you can whip through these things pretty quickly once, you, once you've done a few. You'll see how quick that lasts, or how quick it takes. And then we're just going to define a little bit of a area around his robe. So as you can see, I'm just kind of following along here. We're going to assume his robe is bunching up uh, where his feet are. We'll do it in the, in the front and the back.
So you kind of see there how that goes. And then we'll do the same thing in the back. You don't need to see me do that again, so I'm going to kind of speed right through this section over here. Okay, we're back here. Um, that was pretty simple. You can see um, what I did there at the bottom. I just kind of made his row bunch up a little bit at the front and in the back. So at this point, we're pretty we're pretty much n nearly done. Um, and this is where you would go back and add or or clean up any of your cut lines or add some more detail if you choose. Uh, and you can see I'm just kind of going around here, refining the, the cuts that I made and cleaning up any of the, you know, the, the, the little rough edges of, of, uh, of the whittle and um, stuff like that. Now you can, you know, again, go back and start texturing the hair and you can see what I was mentioning before with the hat seal, we're coming up. So uh, if you if you refine the bottom of that, or you know, completely finish the bottom of the hat too early, you might wind up just uh, chipping it out. So take your take your time. What I like to do, um, there's different ways you can do the hair. Um, you could actually go through and put lines in and, and define it that way, or you can go through the do some surface texturing, just small little marks like this as you can see I'm just kind of going along the surface and adding a little kind of tool marks I, I guess you would really call them and um, that that actually works pretty well for hair it looks interesting um, you can do a dry brush with paint and it'll pick up some of the the um, the raised areas uh, of those tool marks and it actually looks looks kind of interesting so um, you know give that a shot instead of um, uh, doing the if you if you look back on the the figures I showed, the hillbilly guy, he, you know, I did his hair like, you know, you normally would see, all kind of defined out with little cuts and, and the edges and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's, you know, I do, a, actually I do a lot of my carvings like that, but sometimes I kind of like this little texturing method as well, at least that's what I call it. But um, I'm going to kind of go through here because this is again fairly fairly um, not necessarily tedious it's actually very relaxing to do it but um, probably not that entertaining to watch and the video is already uh, a lot longer than it probably uh, should be so um, I'm just going to go through here I'm going to do the texture of the hat and some more of the beard I'll do it at a fast pace so you can kind of see it but that's that's all I'm doing you, you can see just the same kind of stuff here small little texture marks and um, Oh, but first, let me let me point out something. The hat, as you can see from the top, is kind of still squared off. So at this point, um, let's kind of round it off a bit. So I start taking down the edges a bit, um, so we'll you know round it just just a pat, just a tad, a bit, so it's not too square looking. Although honestly, you you, you kind of keep it square too, because you know depending on the type of hat you're doing, it uh, might be correct to do it that way but in this case we're not going to do that so you can see we're starting to round round the hat a bit more make it look like a like a wizard's hat a little bit all right so let me go through here uh, texture things up and uh, I'll be right back Okay, here's um, something I, I 
probably worth pointing out to people. In the process of uh, cleaning it up, there was a uh, little bit of a void, right? <laughs> of course, in a weak spot over here by the uh, the uh, the nostril on the um, um, left side of the uh, character figure, right there, and uh, it just flaked right off. So. Um, it doesn't ruin the figure. You just have to look at look at that. And I'm, I'm just pointing this out because it's sometimes it's it's um, it's you know good to consider that. Um, the, I had made the nose a little bit on the wider side anyway, so all I did was start shaving a little bit off this side to to equalize it. I, you know the, the piece isn't destroyed. It just uh, it just you have to kind of remodify it a bit. That or, or modify it, I should say, not remodify. But um, that, that's all. Just you know, keep that in mind when you're doing these things. You might have a little void in the wood, or you might hit a piece incorrectly, and it might chip out. A lot of times you, you, you can save it, you can fix it, and it's not the, not the end of the world. And again, it's never the end of the world. These are just little whittles that we're doing for fun. And even if you did destroy it, well, what did you put into it, 20 minutes or so? So um, it was a learning experience. But um, So there you go. I modified the nose slightly. Now I'm going to put a little nostril line, probably right there and we'll see if we can get away with doing this and then right there you can see how I drew that and the way I do that is you just kind of, kind of come in here carefully with a little stop cut and just cut down and up to it it just adds a little bit of detail can you see that there in the nose I mean this is one way to do it but just uh, you know keep that in mind if you're if you're working on a piece like I said you might uh, you might wind up having to make some modifications that you didn't anticipate, but that's okay. It's uh, that's the fun of using a natural material like wood. You kind of don't know what you're going to get into. Sometimes if you're getting your wood and it's not um, from some kind of kiln, and, you know, like like this is this is just eastern white pine from one of the big box stores. Um, if you're finding it someplace, you might actually wind up with a a, a staple or a nail or, or a pin or something in the wood that you, you your the edge of your knife discovers for you and um, then you're bringing out your your uh, sharpening stones but uh, wood is a natural material so you're gonna have little little intricacies like that um, for the hat we can start texturing it but I like to kind of take it back just a bit so you know scale it back a little bit You know, your, the head kind of tapers up that way a little bit, so, you know, the hat should kind of be conforming around the top of the head. So just taper it in on the sides a little bit, and it just kind of looks nice that way. So there we go. And you can see. You can even do a little more if you want. But what I'm going to do here is finish, um, basically at this point, I'm, di I'm just adding a little bit of texture to the hat, like I talked about, like I was doing in the hair. Just slowly going over the surface here. Um, and again, this is just one way of doing it. You can, you can especially when it comes to the hair, the hat and, and maybe the, the, the cape, uh, or the, excuse me, the robe, you're always going to have to, um, you know, maybe texture it or... or I don't. I, I never sand my pieces. Uh, I just. I really like the look of them being whittled pieces. So anything I can do to to accentuate the fact that it's a piece of wood and not a piece of plastic, even when I paint it. If you've if you've watched some of my uh, if you've seen some of my finished products, they're they're very. I, people have asked me how I paint it. I, I just take basic craft acrylic paint and I water it down. Uh, so it's like a wash and I just apply it. I might have to apply a couple layers of it, but I just apply it that way and it it's almost serves as a stain. So you can, you can, it, it just highlights the, the grain of the wood and I, I really like that. I think that's the key um, to, to these kind of things. For me, other people like more opaque finish and, that, and that's cool. You can, you can, you can do an antiquing um, on it. I know a lot of people do that. They plan it, they, they, paint it very opaque and then they apply an antiquing solution that goes back in and darkens up all the little grooves and that, that kind of looks cool. Uh, personally it's not, not my style but um, I know a lot of people do it that way and that's, uh, and that's cool. However you like to do it. Just have fun. Alright let me just finish up this a uh, little bit here and um, I'll be right back.
Okay, back here, and we're essentially done with this piece. The only um, other thing I think we can add to it is just a little indication of either eyes or the bottom of the eye or just the top of the cheek, whatever it is. And um, what we'll do is we'll put a little line right here and a little line right there. And kind of same thing we did on the nose. We put a little stop cut in there. Go a little deeper towards the tip, a little deeper up, up top in here. And then just kind of take a little cut up to it and a little cut down to it. Clean up a little bit, and you can see that in there. There you go. And so you could technically call that an eye if you want, and put a little dot in there or something. Really simple. I sh I had a uh, a couple videos back, uh, a little tutorial on how to do eyes and two ways to do them. This is kind of sort of on that si this the the simple eye. Although, you know, that, that video showed that both were really not that hard to do, even though that technically looks more complicated. And there you go. That's it. You can go back and if you want to just kind of add some textures to the cheek, clean it up a bit, whatever you want to do. Um, the one other thing I like to do here is I deepen this a little bit, like so. Put two little stop cuts. And then I cut out a little notch in there, like that. If you want to put, uh, you can keep it, you can just end it here and not worry about anything else. Or, or you can also uh, come in here and add a bit of a lower lip. So it's kind of imagine if you had a line in there like that and you were to put another stop cut just below the one you just did. A little couple stop cuts in there and just kind of take some of the wood out underneath that. It creates just the indication of a lip in there and then when you go and you paint your figure up you can add a little, you know, to the flesh tone, add a little bit of um, a red to your... I, I don't have a flesh tone paint, I kind of mix my own flesh tones. Um, I use red, uh, white, kind of an off-white, a uh, little green, and um, that's one thing to talk about when you're in terms of painting. Um, keep in mind, you're painting, and if you paint the way I do, like I said, very translucent, almost um, transparent, really. Um, the way I, I mix my colors, I use basically red, green, uh, sometimes a little blue, um, white. It's really an off-white, and um, maybe yellow. Sometimes I'll... I'll, I'll throw in uh, a gray, and that's really it, and I just mix my colors with that. Um, in order to tone down the paints, this isn't a painting tutorial, but just uh, in order to tone down the paints, um, what I do is I mix uh, a complementary color. So if I'm, I'm applying red, like to the figure in the beginning of the video, you saw sand, if I'm applying red, I'll use the, I'll use the red right out of the tube, and then I'll put a hint of green in there, the complement of red. And it just tones it down a bit, not a lot, just a little bit of a, just a little bit. It, it actually really helps, um, uh, I think. It, it makes the, the, the colors more natural to the eye. But, um, anyway, again, it's not a painting tutorial, but uh, keep that in mind. When you are painting, I am basically done this little wood over here. What I want to do is, uh, is kind of show you the final product in a cleaned up environment over here. All right, be right back. There you go. Here's the finished, uh, unpainted, obviously, piece. So again, it was a pretty uh, easy whittle. It's a little um, wizard that um, you can turn into a number of different uh, kind of pieces here and paint them up and get them kind of interesting. These guys all have really, just from looking at it now, really rosy cheeks. I think they've been into uh, uh, hillbilly still. Um, good for them. Anyway, there you go. Um, that's, uh, that's our little, uh, relatively easy, um, 
wizard guy that you can, uh, you can turn into some other interesting characters. Come up with some, some of your own ideas. And, uh, you know, leave some comments. Let me know how you like it. Let me know if you'd like to see me do one of these with the Stanley or maybe the North Bay Forge Knife. Uh, you know, leave a comment and let me know. That helps me out. And um, hopefully I'll, I can uh, work up some videos that, uh, that's help, that are helpful to, uh, to everyone. So, again, I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Um, thanks again. And have a great week and a great day. Thank you.